Good morning, James here, back with some more Max Scripts. This one is the V-Ray Material Swap, and I love it because it's just a really quick way to take one material and apply it to something else, so that you don't have to manually search through directories for your textures. So for example, this small pot has a diffuse, roughness, and bump map. And for this container over here, this will have the same material set up. Just a bump, a diffuse, and a roughness. So to demonstrate how it works, we're just going to remove the material on that one. And then we're going to copy the material from this one. Just rename it so it doesn't have a conflict. And apply it to our little container here. So obviously it doesn't look right because the UVs are different on this object. However, that's not going to matter in a moment. Because what we're going to actually do is swap the textures for the ones that are in the same directory as the previous one. So make sure all your textures are in the same location that you're copying from. And the way that this works is it takes the object name and then it's going to apply it to the material name and replace all the textures based on the object name. So let's go ahead and run the script and it should go ahead and replace the material and textures based on the object name. So let's check if it's done the right thing. You'll notice that that name is now the same. And if we take a look at our textures, it's gone ahead and found container small in the directory and replaced it from the small pot. So that's replacing a single material. So what if we wanted to do this with say a multi sub material? The uh, script itself has a few built in extras to handle this situation specifically. So let's go ahead and pick the pendant light I have up here because I know this has a multi-sub with three different material types. One metal, one light, and glass. Now let's find another object such as our stool which has a multi-sub as well. So obviously the intention is we don't have this material yet so let's just go ahead and remove that. So we know that we have this lever here which has a bump, a diffuse, and a roughness and our metal has the same except it also has a metal texture. So let's go ahead and make our multi sub for our stool. We know we're going to need two sub materials and uh, for this we we'll just copy that to the second one and just change the color so we can sort of see what we're doing here. And now I'm going to look through the scene for something that I've already made. Um, that has a similar layout for that leather, which was basically just our small container that we used before. So we can just copy that and paste it onto our leather area. And you should see now that it's updated that it's applied to that. However, obviously because of the UVs, it won't be correct just yet. Now, if you can find another material in the scene with a metal and a bump and everything you need for that, then you can copy and paste that. But since I don't have one yet, I've only just have metals without the bump. I'm just going to go copy this one and then take the roughness texture, put it in the metal, change the name, and then just set the metalness back to one. The script will automatically change the roughness texture to a metal as long as it's in a metal slot. Now an important part of using the script with the multi sub is setting a name for each sub material. You'll see why in a moment. So I'm just checking to make sure that my stool object name matches the texture name in the directory. So it's 3DC KISC stool. So I'll just double check that. It's in here. And we found it. Obviously, if you're just making all your textures and putting them in the same directory, you don't need to double check. As long as you're sure the name is right. And once we run the script, you'll see that the material gets changed to name. And when it refreshes by clicking on the sub material, you'll notice that it gets suffixed with the ID name. So you have stool lever, Stool metal, and you can see we have all the textures automatically swapped 
to that stool. So sanity check, we have our base color, our normal texture, we have our roughness texture, and our metal texture all swapped out correctly based on the name. Now you can also do the same thing by copying a object and its material from a different scene. So for example, in this kitchen, I want to take this tap because let's say it has exactly what I need, a diffuse, a roughness, and a metal. And I want to use that same material set up in my other scene. So let's just copy that. And in our other scene, we just paste it in. So now we just select the material of the object we've pasted in, and we can go ahead and apply it to our tap. Now take note, because it came from a different scene, one, it has a different name. It's just uh, one letter different. And also the textures are going to be in a different folder. So all we have to do is copy the directory where our current textures are. And then we're just going to paste that over the old directory. And it's not going to be able to find them, um, even though it says found. <laughs> but it doesn't matter because once we run the script, it's going to check that directory we've just set where all our other textures are. And then check the name of the object and go ahead and replace the textures in the material and update the material name as per previously. So let's go ahead and run the script. And now you'll see that all our materials for that have been updated to match the object name and all the textures have been replaced once again. So how do I get this script? Well, that's easy enough. Just head to the GitHub page or in the description. And in the Mac script section, you'll notice there's a JV V-Ray material swap script. And just go ahead and download that. Once it's in your downloads folder, just drag and drop it into 3D Studio Max. You can then customize your toolbars and in the category, go down to Vela and in Vela, get the automate V-Ray material swap script and drag it to your toolbar somewhere. Now you're ready to rock and roll. And uh, as you can see, that button now does the same thing as my other button does. I just prefer to have it all in my automation toolbar. Now, in case you're wondering uh, why I made this, um, it's basically because it just saves a lot of clicking and a lot of initial material setup. So, you know, normally you'd have to find a bitmap, put it in, or you can just copy one from a previous then change all the names and update the paths and you know how it goes. So just using this, you can just get your base template for each material and just roll it out and swap all the textures. But, you know, it has to rely on your object name. So if your object name does not match your texture names, then none of this is going to work for you. And also keep in mind that wherever those textures are in the original material, be the same location as the textures will be for your new material might be pointing out the obvious here but you know just want to make it clear so that you're aware of how it's functioning in the background okay so let's run through one last example and that would be like our oven here now this has a quite a few different materials but the first two are just diffuse and roughness and then our third one has a metal and our fourth one, again, just a diffuse and a roughness. So let's go ahead and find something with just a diffuse and a roughness, which could be this one. Yep, that's good. And we'll just copy that and go ahead and paste it on those three materials that we need. And then go ahead and run the script. Now you notice in this case, I've made a mistake and that is the oven name is suffixed with a 001. So that's not how the texture is named. So if we just check that, it should just be called oven. So once we know that 
our naming is correct, we can just rerun the script and it should fix that issue. And just remember that because of the refresh issue, um, it'll only update once you go into the sub name. So now they're all correctly named as per the ID name. It's also flexible in the way that if you wanted to, you could always change one of these later um, and rerun it and it shouldn't change your other materials. So for example, if I wanted to just take this metal because it has all the textures I need and paste it into the metal for the oven because it has the same material layout, then once we run the script again, you'll see that the UVs are off. It'll fix that when it finds the texture and it'll update the name and all the textures within the multi-subs. Okay, so before I bore you to death, I'm going to call it a day and uh, hope you find it useful.